So Lou, how would you sum up the state of ad targeting versus consumer privacy? I think we have to strike a balance, and I think there's an opportunity for us to reconstitute how we think about, even the word targeting is offensive. What if we could actually recognize that privacy is an opportunity to cultivate a relationship with consumers and differentiate our company from our competitors? It requires us to let go of a lot of the things that we have historically counted on to actually drive efficiency, but it's time that we rebuild. We see a lot of legislation coming out. We see Congress getting activists. Today, they went after GARM. We have an opportunity to self-regulate, and we have an opportunity to give a better contract to customers and consumers. Let's take that opportunity because the old ways are not going to be around much longer, and we should get a start in that right away. We've seen the wall garden show cracks for the first time really in forever. Is that going to be a permanent shift in your mind? I do think the walled gardens, for other reasons, have to reconstitute their value proposition. Let's face it, social media right now, which constitutes the bulk of the walled gardens, has their own special problems. Facebook has had multiple governance issues which have driven advertisers away. Twitter's new owner seems very uninterested in cultivating relationships with advertisers. And, you know, you've got the President of the United States calling out TikTok. So those walled gardens have to actually let marketers see and audit how they're arbitrating customer experiences, particularly in regulatory categories where I come from, uh, like financial services and HIPAA. Uh, at the same time, we're seeing balkanization elsewhere. Uh, the retail media networks, which are the panacea right now, along with CTV, um, are really kind of separating out into these mini fiefdoms, which I don't think is sustainable. I think they have rich first party data that marketers, particularly endemic marketers, those that sell in those platforms, um, are going to try to make it work for a while. But I imagine there will be consolidation around some players that actually are able to bunker through in an identity way without exposing that identity so that we can orchestrate more relevant experiences in all of those locations, not individually. Lou, are brands going too far too fast and trying to gather as much first party data as they can? I think the first party data panacea is a false god, and I have been saying this for a year, uh, probably for more than that. First party data is great, but let's talk about that for a moment. Let's say I'm a big bank, call me Bank of America. I have tons of first party data that is highly permissioned that we use to orchestrate next best action in first party environments. What data sets do I have that are different than my biggest competitor, Chase? The answer is none. In a mature world where we're using AI to arbitrate next best action, we actually need more third party data. I liken the analogy to the spice cabinet. Every table in the world, including everyone behind us, has a salt, pepper and, a sh a salt and pepper shaker on it, right? Great, very useful. That's first party data. You want to flavor the meal, you want to differentiate the offer, you want to engineer relevance into every interaction and leverage context, you need third party data. You need clean, well lit third party data that hasn't been modeled, that is recent, all of the permissions are in place, but I think marketers need to balance their thirst for weaponizing their first party data with recognizing that third party data gives them the differentiation they need to win in the marketplace. Lastly, how, how are we doing in the industry in terms of understanding the importance of clean rooms and their potential? I think uh, we have another situation here where I call ready, fire, aim. Uh, everyone wanted a clean room. What the first use cases were that went through clean rooms were what George Bush would call, George Bush 43 would call better. Could we do the things we do today better in a clean room? It was an abject failure of imagination. What the clean room allows you to do when you've got a CDP feeding it uh, harmonized data that you know has been connected across your first and third party ecosystem, whether that's your Hadoop Lake, whether that's your uh, time series data, whether it's the federated data that you purchase, um, all of that coming together allows you to start building modern segments that are real time or near real time compared to the segmentation that most marketers use today which was done by a consultancy two years ago, cost $3.2 million, 
and is a moment in time that is long gone. Just think of the impact of what's happened in Silicon Valley with the layoffs. There's a lot of people that are in a very high, you know, desirable segment who aren't actually in that segment anymore. Static segmentation doesn't do that. One very vibrant use case is real-time dynamic segmentation at scale that a clean room can easily facilitate.